Welcome. Our guest today has been performing since 1967 with a film, An Evening in Paris, debuting in 1973. He joined a comedy troupe called Zoo Factory, performing alongside Dan Hennessy, Bruce Gordon, and Harriet Cohen. On television, you may recognize his voice as Beastly, the clumsy and frantic but smart villain on the Care Bears television series. Some of his credits include The Wizard of Oz, Star Wars Droids, Ewoks, Hot Shots, Barbie and the Rockers, The Adventures of Teddy Ruxpin, My Pet Monster, Six Clifford the Big Red Dog series, a voice actor that has appeared in all three Super Mario Brothers animated series, The Real Ghostbusters, Beetlejuice, Sonic the Hedgehog, Tales from the Crypt Keeper, X-Men, Ace Ventura animated Pet Detective series, Franklin and Friends, Pete the Cat, and his newest, Red Ketchup. These are just a few of his 169 credited titles and growing resume. Please welcome artist, actor, voice performer, John Stalker. John, thank you so much for your time and welcome to the show. My pleasure. My pleasure, Chris. Thanks for having me. It, it's amazing. And, you know, Tales from the Crypt Keeper used to be my bedtime stories when I was younger. <laughs> so that's the yeah, 90s you, for you. Yeah, you, you got some self-assessment to do then, I think. <laughs> Well, John, you've actually been working in the entertainment industry for five decades. Uh, you've yeah. taught, you've casted, you've created. What can you share with us that are some of the most common rookie mistakes people start when they get into the industry? Um, the biggest mistake you can make is that it'll last forever. Um, we know nothing does. But um, I know I work with a lot of people who kickstarted in high gear. And, you know, and people spend all the money they make. Hey, this is, I've got a series. Uh, I'm just going to go and spend. And, you know, when the series stops and you think about it, if, if on camera, voice, it's all the same. Getting a, a campaign, getting a, an animated series or an on camera series. You know, they all have a, they all have a lifetime, lifespan. And, uh, you know, after three years, if you think about it, even, the 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 series that we watch the netflix series or before that the 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 different network uh series private ones privately financed ones um how many of those performers go on and on and on and they're in a series and i mean ted danson is one of them uh you know william shatner has done a number of series you start thinking about how many of them have done series after series after series and you can probably count them on when you're, if you're trying to remember on two hands there may be others but that's a lot of performers to uh, i mean and, and they're fabulous actors you see kids, you see some kid in a movie and he's like, oh my God, this kid's great. Never does anything ever again, right? Um, you know, and, and that's something you got to be very careful of. If you want to be a performer, don't, you, you, you cannot take your foot off the gas, really. You got to keep going because there's always going to be somebody uh, ready to, you know, to use the same metaphor, step on the gas while you vised off and pull it in front of you and uh, win the race, right? That's not bad. I'm going to use that again sometimes. And, uh, you know, and uh, you've got to be diligent without being, I always say, don't be aggressive, be assertive. That's the gentle way of pushing yourself. But uh, yeah, I would say that's uh, you know, don't just don't expect if you're if you're riding high, don't sit back, take your shoes off, you know, and crack another Stella and say, hey, this is the life, man. This is it forever. <laughs> it isn't. It's a tough business. It's not like being a doctor. You know, you do, a, you know, you do brain surgery. They're lined up around the block. Every hospital in the world wants you and everybody wants to be your patient. And it's a it's an incredible skill, but it's vital. You got to realize that actors aren't what we do isn't vital. Certainly not we as people. We're replaceable, just according to the whims of the time. So you you'd actually made a a comment where it was you know if you're a child actor who's fabulous, you see him in something and you don't see them again. 
Yeah. Is that because that actor has stopped chasing their dream? They're waiting for it to, to kick in or just they're too familiar and they can't use them again for a period of time. Well, it's sometimes that I think a lot of times a kid is playing him or herself. So, I mean, as actors, we have to not necessarily be ourselves. Not every role is going to be you. That's why there are funny voices in voice acting and cartoon characters. Uh, in one, uh, an on-camera performer can be evil in one show and be magnificently beautiful, friendly, warm in another. You can be a murderer. You can be a doctor who saves lives. In it. But kids, generally speaking, aren't as malleable. They don't, I don't believe, it's not that they, they, they couldn't do it, but I don't think their thinking is quite the same as someone who's dedicated and really knows what acting is. So sometimes a kid plays himself or herself in something, magnificent performance, but they can't make the adjustment. So when a director says, no, I want you to be really angry, but I'm not angry. I know that, but you've got to pretend you're angry, but I'm not angry. Right. So I think that's part of it. The other is always, especially now, uh, new, different. Give me something new. Hmm. Yeah, that kid did that. Yeah, he was good. I loved him. He was great in that. But, you know, we want this. So they do it. And then again, there's always, you know, the producer's niece. <laughs> you know, <laughs> why don't you use my niece? Well, she doesn't act. I know, but I have money. Okay. <laughs> she gets the <laughs> So when we talk about these, uh, sorry, when we talk about these roles, we talk about people coming in and making these mistakes. With your experience, what's the hardest thing for a voice actor to wrap their head around when they get a part or when they're trying for a part? Let's say you're, you're going for an audition. But it's a voice edition. It's not an on-camera edition. How do we wrap our heads around that to, to be able to deliver what we need to do? Because you don't always know what, especially now, or, or you, we email auditions. You get you don't get enough feedback from the people, the creative and the production end. Well, what do they want, right? I mean, I know I've put the question out myself. And, you know, what do you want? Well... We'll know it when we hear it. So, oh, wow, what a great note. <laughs> right? Um, so, uh, okay, this is for, you know, a horror, scary horror deep voice. So I won't do a 90-year-old toothless Jamaican woman. I won't do that, okay? You know, it's like, well, you, you know, you got to give me something to work with. See, and things have, have changed very much too. I mean, I'm, I guess in, in in a sense, though, I, I mean, I love modern technology. It's changed the industry way, 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 so much for the better. But some some of the old school attitudes uh, that have gone by the boards were wonderful. You would come in to an audition and sometimes it would be, I know that I'd, I'd go in, they'd show me perhaps the mock-up of the character and say, what do you got? And sit there. It's how the voice for Beastly came about. I was, Nelvana was doing this show, Care Bears. I wasn't watching it particularly. Well, I didn't tell anybody, but, you know. And, um, and they showed me the mock-up of Beastly. And this was just an example of it. It's, it's happened a hundred times, but it was my first experience of saying, wow, they want me as a creative entity as well, not just someone who can deliver a voice, but they. But there's something special about when you work to create it with someone and it becomes more a part of you, you know that that, that delivery is going to be honest. It's going to, because it's it's partly you. And, it, and, and that's beautiful. And and uh, it's like, it's interesting too, because I'm doing the Red, the, the red Ketchup show, right? Uh, the character I play is a little bit of me, you know. I auditioned and I did a couple of things, and I they didn't call me in uh, and, and and say what do you got, but 
you know, I try to get a little of myself into so many of them um, in terms of attitude or headspace. Can't do it with a voice because you don't want to do something that's already been done. But if you have sort of a, it's not a personal interest in it, but if it's a little bit of you, it makes it so wonderful. I look forward to going in and doing red ketchup. You know, every couple of weeks I was going in and uh, Ron Hyatt, I think they killed my character off, unfortunately. So that, my theory probably is just been gone for shit now. But uh, <laughs> but uh, you never know. They they really liked him. And uh, it's funny because I said, do you think he'll, he can come back or something? They said, it's a cartoon. <laughs> you know, <laughs> You didn't really die, you know, so who knows? But anyway, there, it was enjoyable. And, and that's really important to find that connection so that it becomes more of an honest delivery. I've done lots of stuff where it just wasn't me and it was work. And I always said, I love doing voice work because it's it's fun, too. Gosh, you know, I go, I do what I love to do, and I make money. It's great. I mean, money, making money is really important, right? It is. But if you can really enjoy it, you know. That's, it seems like, uh, you're, oh. it's like this connection between the character and bringing what some would say your truth, even though it's a voice audition. Right. And it's, you know, let's get a little bit of you in there so that we can show yeah. this connection and... I feel that there's a lot of people out there who just say, I can't, I can't, or I don't know how to do it in a recording. If you're on camera, they can jump around and say, Hey, this is me. But in voice, they, uh, they tend to not be able to do that in the booth. And certainly something is when you were in the booth, if you're a hand talker, then speak with your hands while you're recording. Right. It would, it would just help. Right. right. Uh, well, yeah, I don't know if I said that to you. We, we worked together. I was you, You're taking lessons. And I, I always encourage people to talk with their hands. You can almost close your eyes and hear if someone's talking with their hands. And remember, too, that in animation, the wonderful thing is if somebody, if because it's broad, right? Animation is big, right? It's you're giving life to something that isn't alive. Animate. Right. And if you go, I don't know, what do you think the the the, the storyboard artist is gonna do? That's what he's gonna do. The character is gonna go, I don't know, your eyes, your face, your your hands. It's like you are giving them a big bonus. That's truly working together with the people who draw the characters. So when you're talking and you do this, I'm, I do it anyway. You gotta be careful. I was, you know, because one of the things is you don't wear bracelets when you go in because they make noise and, uh, you know, nothing loose, no watches and stuff. And definitely don't wear polyester. It's another really good reason not to wear polyester. <laughs> right. It makes noise. But but making but being physical and it's more fun, too, because you get into it. People are standing. I've watched people stand there like this and it's like the voice. There's a sort of a deadness to it. There really, really is. It's like, the, the, I'm, and then I watch the people who work all the time. And I, it's interesting because I see it because I direct as well, you know. And I love watching someone who's like going, yeah, I was like playing an old gnarly guy. And they're doing that. And I'm going, this is great. This is great. I can see the character being the artist going, oh, this is just, my, oh, my God. Right. And, and enjoying that part of it too. It's it's really important, really important to be physical. And when you're doing commercial work, I mean, I, I'm physical when I do commercial work. And I've, again, I've watched a lot of other, a lot of other performers. It's smaller. You wouldn't go like this necessarily, unless the commercial is a big, broad voiceover, right? Then that takes on a different kind of life. But, you know, to, to, to move hands like this and to, Right here at, uh, you know, here at the Toronto General Hospital, we're trying to give da 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 da, right? And it's soft and it's warm, but you're still moving. You're still, you're putting all of that in, and it makes a difference. Makes a difference. Smiling too. Always smile. 
when we talk about making these differences, hand gestures, smiling with your voice and your eyes and, and things like this, mm-hmm. when we look at the different selection of training and courses that are out there, and, and certainly you're no stranger to coaching and teaching and, and assisting, what are mm-hmm. some of those things that people can look for for a good coach or a good a workshop or a good place to get that vocal training so that they're not beating themselves up in the booth when they get that chance? Very good question. Um, It's like anything else. It's like if you went to a psychiatrist and weren't comfortable, would you continue to go back? If you went to a doctor who who said, yeah, I'll give you pills. Well, I I really don't want to take pills. I want to, is there some homeopathic or uh, can I, you know, can I, can I, you know, for my blood pressure, can I do this or for that? I can, I, right. You've got to find somebody you're comfortable with. So you shop around. It may cost you a few bucks, right? Uh, you know, I think I'm a good teacher. I'm sure there are a lot of good teachers, but we're all so very different. I know when I, when I offer classes, I always talk for 15 minutes. I try to do a Skype or Zoom, whatever it is. I talk. I want to see their eyes. I want to say, are you looking at me? Or are you looking like, I want someone who looks at me. I want to look at them. I want to see, I want to feel, visually sort of feel their reaction to what I say. Because I have a particular technique, right? If you're going to buy into it, great. If you don't like it, I wish you all the luck in the world, but we have to connect. That's the most important thing. You've got to be comfortable. You've got to believe what the teacher's telling you. You have to be able to be comfortable arguing, saying, yeah, but you said this thing, thing. Why in the, here do I do this? And it's that, and, and a good teacher is going to say, ah, very good, because there you did, da-da-da, and here we're doing this. Oh, I get it or to continue arguing if you wish, because that's good. Are you disputing? I, 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 when, I, when, I, when I direct, it's animation 99.9% of the time. Someone says, I think a line should be delivered like this. You know what? Let's record them both. You've got to do it my way, and I'm going to record yours, and we'll submit them both. And we'll put yours or mine, we'll put whatever in as an alternate. And I know when it goes to the sort of selection committee, when it goes to the the uh, the production, they'll listen to both. I don't know which one they've chosen. I, can, I couldn't even, if I watched the episode later, I wouldn't remember which one was mine, which one was the performers. I mean, I'd got to be, as a, you know, as, as a professional, I'd have to be an idiot to say, no, I'm not going to use that. I'm never going to submit that take, that read, because I'm the one that looks good. Right. Like I'm the hero. Right. So, but aside from that, I want to be, you know, you trust the performer to have his or her own thoughts about it. Right. Okay. So and that's important. That's important. And it's again, that's in the teaching, it's gotta be the same vibe to use a sixties word. When you talk about connecting and having something that sticks out and making it yours and ensuring that people are the right fit, with your amazing resume, is there a specific production that you've done that just really connects with you that you've just been so proud to stand in front of and say, yeah, you know, I, that was fabulous and this is my connection to it and just having that that emotional piece to it? Well, certainly, I like Care Bears. Beastly was a wonderful character. Because he was kind of, uh, I mean, he, he, it was, uh, I got, I was so blessed that I got that role as, as kind of my kickstart for major roles. It was really lovely. And because he was kind of, everybody loves Beastly. Everybody, they, you just do, right? And if I think if you ask people who's the most memorable character on Care Bears, most people would say that, right? And the guy who played No Heart was a wonderful guy to work with, and we would do stuff together. Chris Wiggins, late Chris Wiggins, was just, just a beautiful, wonderful human being and a great actor as well. Um, and um, I love doing Newton Gimmick from Teddy Ruxpin. That was just wonderful. I get to sing a little bit, and I, 
although it was kind of a sound alike the um the original because when they it was they were started doing it in LA and then when they moved it to Canada Ottawa we recorded in Ottawa um they had to have a certain number of Canadians. Well, it wasn't going to be Phil Barron, who was the voice of Teddy. It wasn't going to be Will Ryan, who was the voice of Grubby. So they replaced him. His name is Tony. Oh, gosh. Gosh, I'm sorry. I forget. But um, uh, so it was kind of a feel alike that I had to do. But I got to sort of mold it and change it into myself, and and he was just a just a great character, and I I liked him. I mean, I could go over, you know, uh, doing Ultron from the Avengers was was fun too because it was so broad that it was like right, and it was it, it was interesting. It was an interesting voice to come up with that. Uh, do it like that, right? Doing that weird thing. And it was like, oh, shit, was that me? <laughs> right? <laughs> and, uh, but, you know, you sometimes, you try to find again something in everyone. But, uh, yeah, those are a couple of the, I, I, if I sat down and read my list of roles, I'm sure I could pick some more. Yeah, that's wonderful. No, Beastly is certainly a character that stands out to. Uh, yeah, to- after all these years, wow. I hate to tell you, I hate to even think how long ago it is. I'm starting to beat up. <laughs> with with all the characters that you've done, do you prefer, or do you have more fun, I guess I should say, playing the hero or the villain? When those breakdowns come through and you're like, is it, yes, I got the bad guy, or yes, I got the hero, what runs through your mind when that comes in? <laughs> funny, 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 interesting. Um First of all, I love doing, you know, I love doing both because I like to, I like to invent something new or do something new. But remember in cartoons, even the bad guys are, aren't bad, right? And then, you know, this new wave of adult cartoons, yes, unless it's, again, but if it's funny, the bad guys are just stooges, you know, they're like goofs half the time. They're so broad that you laugh at them, right? Um but I guess I've always had a uh, more of a bent for the the nice guys, the warm guys, right? I mean, my voice is kind of sucked. I was, you know, when I when I in, in the in the days when I was doing a mountain of uh, commercial work, those are the ones I used to love going in and doing it. Be you know the if you haven't done so and so, then da 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 da. Right? But that, I love that. You know, crispy on the outside tender and juicy on the inside right i loved all that soft corny schmaltzy stuff right better than the hard driving i didn't enjoy any of those i would do them because there was a paycheck at the end right but uh you know (laughs) somebody had to do it um so um yeah now as you said you, you you mentioned that you did direct and you have casted some projects what are things that we can do as actors when we're submitting to you that are just like, hey, guys, you got to stop doing this? Is it the the pops in the mouth, the licking of it, uh, of the lips there? What can we do? What what can, John, what's that advice that says, hey, guys, don't do this anymore. Please, please, please. Everyone's making this mistake. Stop it. What would that be? I would say if you're giving a direction, don't do something else. Right. Uh, if you're going in at the C again, here's the difference between um, an email audition and a one on one in a studio. You go in as a, in a one on one and you have the opportunity to like, give me 10 degrees off that. You know, add, add a little this. Right. And, and, and then when you do that, you get it. It was, you always have the opportunity to, to show that there was a versatility that could cover every emotion, every attitude. There were ways to do that. But, but now, um, I, I, when I would get aud- auditions emailed into me, I would get somebody doing something that was just so off, um, what I was asked to do. See, there's there's sort of no second chance 
right to 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 correct and to 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 back up and go forward again so i would say that's one of the things i don't worry about a lot of things because i know that when i get into a studio the physical if somebody's got um you know uh, does a, a lot of lip smacking or something well the the engineer is going to say let's get him a water Right. Or they're going to come in and put a change the the the, uh, the pop screen or right or stand this or do that. A lot of those things are um, uh, are, are um, avoidable. Sometimes if someone's though, I should tell you, like some somebody's got a slate impediment, you use it because it makes the character interesting. So just uh, if you're going in for an audition, what to avoid? Attitude. Get there early. Know your script. If you've gotten a script emailed to you ahead of time, for God's sakes, print it. Come in with a hard copy with all your notes and hieroglyphics. There's nothing I like more to see is when an actor comes in either for an audition or definitely for a recording and their script is all... That's the all stuff. I said, oh, oh, that's beautiful. Because I know that, that that performer has really worked on it given right underline this a little uh, a little carrot to do so and so with a little um question mark saying ask dura ask voice director re because they think they should use a different word love that stuff right so that's always if you know again don't be uh, that's what i when we were talking with earlier and i said don't be aggressive be assertive always it's great Every director likes to hear input from a character and they love to hear it, especially with a continuing character because you are working hand in, in hand, right? With the writers and everybody else. It's an ensemble production, not with all the cast, but it's ensemble in terms of all the different disciplines that go to make the show, right? And you say, you know what? But but he should, he remember he did the thing there. What, you know? He, he's making the same mistake here. Maybe we should reprise that emotion. Great idea. Right? I love that you said, so, you know, drop the attitude, be there early, be prepared. Be early, be prepared. Right? Yeah, I mean, I can't tell you how many times, you know, performers late. Everybody is late once in a while. It just happens. And there are people who are chronically late, but those are people who crave attention. That's all. And I don't mean that. I don't mean that. I'm serious. Mm -hmm. People who are chronically late, there is something inside them that says, got to be late because I'll be noticed. Uh, but I've had, you know, hey, uh, hey, man, you're, you're 20 minutes late. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, I don't, I'm not going to confront him, but I go away. And the next time he's auditioning for something, it's like, I'm sorry. I, I, I don't, you know, guy didn't even say, geez, I'm really sorry. Uh, da, 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 da. Why don't I wait? I hope you got the, the next person in. I'll sit and wait till you've got an opening and a hole and I'll, I'll that's what you do. Got to have that element of humility. Even if it's, you're bullshitting, you better, you better pretend you're an actor, make it work. <laughs> right. right. That's uh, yeah. Be come, come in, be happy. Uh, if you've got, I mean, everybody's dog dies, everybody's mother's sick, everybody has a car accident, everybody has some gets sick, leave it at the door mm -hmm. because, um, you know, the, you don't bring that into the studio with you, just leave it in that little duffel bag and pick it up on the way out, right? Come in with a big smile, right? Because if you start talking to, to somebody about, Oh yeah, you know, geez, my my uh you know, my dad had a heart attack and he went to the hospital and I'm oh man, I'm just uh, and you know they're 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 they you know the people that show you go, oh man, that's really too bad. Anyway, line six here, where you've got the Yep. Sorry, it's the way it is. They they um, people are concerned and they are nice and they're everything else, but they're there to work and to 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 put a production together. So it, it kind of led me right into my, you know, these tips and tricks, and you've already answered that, which was beautiful there. But John, I want to ask you something. What is something that people tend to misunderstand about you the most? 
Um, misunderstand about me. I try to be a pretty open book to, to try to not leave anything uncovered. Uh, I don't know. I think uh, the attitude about actors is that they all live this wonderful, you know, either a wonderful, successful life in, in a mansion with three cars or they're living in a garret, right, eating a craft dinner every day, you know. The, but we're all of us are kind of in between, especially Canadian actors. There are very few who... Uh, who are enormous stars and haven't, but haven't made it south of the border, right? Right. Uh, but um, uh, yeah, I think that we're we're kind of like everybody else. There's, um, I mean, it's funny because I think uh, actors who are successful and and i know I, I get it not i mean i'm a voice actor so people don't go hey i reckon well it's happened actually people said i recognize i was walking in front of you are you the guy that yes i am oh my god well <laughs> I, that's happened like a few times but it's not generally uh the, the, the way it is but you know i i, I go to cons uh, i do a lot of uh anime or animation conventions and uh, there is. Matter of fact, come and see me at Anime North uh, end of the month, Toronto. Um, uh, and I, you know, and I, 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 I actually I'm sometimes embarrassed. I can't avoid it. I love it when they go, oh, gee, you're, you're my hero. You did this and you did that. Would you do the love thing? There's a line I want you to, could you read this? Could you get a picture with? It's like, and it's nice. And it's like, it's like, oh man, you know, I I I I, it, I find it just it's a little I guess I don't know what the word is. Uh, I'm almost sometimes embarrassed, and not but it's not embarrassment. It's like it's akin to it. If any of you who watch this know the word, the feeling, text me, email me, <laughs> tell me, tell me who I am. <laughs> I mean, I, I love it. I love that the fact that they love my work and everything else. And that that makes me joyous because that's truly giving back. I mean, every actor says that. You know, it's my way of giving back, right? It's like, well, it is, but most of them are full of you know, crap anyway. But we're all full of crap. Yeah. Um, but um, it, it is. It's a, it's, it's a strange, humbling in a way. And am I worthy? And... Uh, I think a lot of actors uh, are the are tend to be clowns crying in the alley. You know, a that's lot that's a really neat way of looking at it. It's a different, yeah, huh. yeah. I, I mean, you know, I have my real sad moments, and I, you know, and disturbed moments, and uh, you know, not that I am disturbed, but. Uh, <laughs> maybe just a little um but you know I, I i think we all the actors do this thing so we can be someone else i think there's a little bit of fear sometimes of just being yourself and if i'm doing a if i'm walking down the street or if i'm at an anime convention i am myself so uh, there it's it's sometimes it's it there's a an un, uh, you know a I, I can feel ill at ease. Mm -hmm. Okay. Try to explain. I'm sorry. I wish no. I were better at it. I, I have time for one more question for you, John, and it's uh, what makes John Stalker smile? Well, in terms of this interview, a really great performance and somebody complimenting me and my being able to say, thanks, man. I love doing this. And that always gives me a great thing, you know, when there's that mutual thing. Because sometimes they love it, I hate it. Sometimes I love it, they hate it. Uh, but when, in professionally, when that happens, um, you know, I'm an amateur landscaper too. And when, I, when I'm when i working hard and I've just accomplished putting up some rockery with a, a stump and a thing and a, you know, and a, and a, and a you know, beautiful red daylily and a thing. And it's like that, I stand back and I love that too. And my my kids, I'm very proud of my three kids. 
very proud of all of them. And when they say, hey, dad, I just did that, 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 that. Oh, wow, oh my God, that's wonderful, right? My wife makes me smile too. She's funny. And, uh, you know, I'm just, I mean, uh, you know, the older you get, the more precious those moments are. And um, and uh, I smile too when I think about getting older because I always say it beats the alternative, not getting any older, right? And, uh, and uh, you know, I love being alive. <laughs> just life's good, man. Life's just amazing. That's fabulous, John. And I've had a great career, buddy. I've had a great career. If I did it today, I'd have no regrets. Nothing I've done, nothing I haven't done that I say, oh, I really want, oh, I wish I could have. You know, I wanted to play pedal steel guitar. That's the only thing I didn't get to do in life, right? And I'm still, I'm not dead. I may do it yet. <laughs> And John, where can people learn more about you? Where are you on social media? Where can they find you? Well, I am on Instagram, but I'm really, really, really bad with it. So my wonderful daughter sort of handles it for me. So, uh, but there's a lot of current stuff on there and projects that I've been involved in or different, sometimes interviews and um, commentaries. Um you can go to my website, johnstocker.ca. Look me up on IMDb. I've got a, I've got a fairly lengthy. I don't know if anybody's got a bigger one in cartoon world. Anyway, uh, yeah. If anybody wants lessons, I'm available. I still teach. I enjoy it. I'm a little more specific now. I want people who are really, really gung ho. Like, yeah, I was thinking about it, and that no, I want somebody who says I'm going to be a voice actor. Now I just need the last step, right? I'm I'm at that kind of at that that point. Okay. Not being arrogant, but uh, you know, I have to hone it down because it's summer and I want to be outside. <laughs> That's perfect. Johnstalker.ca, everybody. Uh, this has been Coffee with Chris. John, you've been absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for your time today. Smile to inspire everybody and have a fantastic day. Thank you. Thank you, you too, Chris. Take care, everybody.